What is your thought process when someone says you don't know the foreign language that you're trying to learn? My name is Franklin and this is first1000hours.com. I'm here to inspire and motivate you to complete your first thousand hours of your language learning marathon. I don't teach languages, but I share an out of the box mentality to help you learn languages on your own in a real world context. So I want to first give a disclaimer and that is we are talking today about person X. I'll just call person X a he. We are not talking about specific names or specific people and I want to keep the conversation like that on this YouTube channel. But I think we can get a lot of uh, still benefit by talking about a general theme on this concept, okay? So let's uh, also talk about this example, for instance. You are learning Spanish and you start speaking Spanish, someone hears you speak and then they say, ah, you don't know anything about Spanish or you don't know Spanish. Uh, what are your thought processes when someone says something like that to you and this most likely will happen to many language learners if not every language learner i'm not sure i'm not every language learner but i know that this does happen to some people and it might have already happened to you so i i think there are two schools of thought uh when it comes to learning in general so let's just say that we're still using the example of uh, a language learning marathon and some people approach learning a foreign language as if they were to start saying like, okay, I'm going to run a marathon. And then they just try to run a marathon without any practice and try to just do their best on the marathon. And they find, oh, actually, I'm not ready to do the marathon. My body's not ready. So I, I am a, I'm a failure. And, and then they just stop any type of ambition to be a marathon runner because the first time they tried to run a marathon, they didn't do well. Uh, and then I think there's another uh, type of mindset that says, okay, well, actually, before I can run a marathon, I have to practice. I have to build up endurance. I have to go through a process before I get to the point where I'm a marathon runner. And uh, so th those are the two types of philosophies, I think, for learning. One is like, you know, you go from knowing nothing to knowing everything all at once. And this is how that mindset works. You say, okay, I'm going to learn Spanish. And then you put yourself in an all Spanish environment, maybe going to a Spanish church or something like that. You find out, oops, I don't know everything. And so um, I don't understand what people are saying. So I'm not going to do that again because that is, that's hard. Uh, I didn't know what was happening. I expected to know a lot more. So I'm not going to do anything ever, ever again in this direction. Actually, I'm going to give up Spanish because the first time um, I tried to do something, it didn't work. And, and then because you might have that in your mind, then now when someone else is making mistakes, when someone else um, maybe speaks or something like that and does not say something properly the first time, then you can say to that person, oh, actually, you don't know anything because you know we don't embrace the process of getting from knowing nothing to actually being able to complete your first thousand hours of your language learning marathon. And I think we have unreasonable expectations sometimes uh, when it comes to learning. And that means that we have this idea that people have to be fluent in the language before they know something. And I please, in the comments, give me the definition of fluency what is that definition i don't think that that there is a definition of fluency um, that definition really does not exist in my opinion and it's, it's just very ambiguous but we have this very high standard uh, that we sometimes expect for ourselves and then we put that on other people and that does nothing but basically i think discourages people from actually trying and going through a process and um, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in America, I think that we are very proud monolingual sometimes. We are just really happy to know English and English only. That's not everybody in America. Obviously, uh, America is a melting pot of different cultures and different people and different languages. Uh, but at the same time, I think that there is um, a sentiment uh, that is almost un-American if you learn another language outside of English. Uh, and, and with that mentality, I think that that can uh, also go against people that might be trying to learn another language and maybe be un-American, whatever that means. 
Um, but I had some other points I wanted to say as well. Um, what happens if you are a proud monolingual, or and I have been a proud monolingual, uh, but what happens if we embrace that type of uh, mentality is we don't know what it means to learn a language. And so um, we can tell somebody, hey, you don't know a language, but we ourselves don't understand the process it takes for someone to learn a language. And I can tell you that I was listening to Reto Bilingue and it was just interesting because, you know, when we look at children, sometimes we can say, okay, well, a child, you know, they're the people that are just going to be like sponges and they're, they're going to learn a language without any problems, without any mistakes. But then I'm listening to Reto Bilingue, which is uh, a Spanish channel talking about how to raise children in bilingual or multilingual. And the person was encouraging people to be patient with children's mistakes. So guess what? Even children, the superstars of language learning still make mistakes. And we have to we have to know that that is part of the language learning journey. Sometimes we forget about that because we become adults and we don't remember all of the, all of the mistakes we made in our first language that we were learning. Or some of us might even forget um, how it was to, to be learning a second language as a child. But um, there were mistakes that were made. Okay, and I and speaking about mistakes, um, you know, with this idea of fluency, we could say that that means that people don't people will never make a mistake but i just want to let you know that as as i'm doing even in this video talking to you right now i make mistakes in english but does that mean that i'm not fluent in my native tongue my native tongue is english and i can really i really want to show you show you some of the mistakes i've made in english and so i'm going to put on the screen a youtube card that you can click on where you'll see a lot of the bloopers i've never released um, before about mistakes I've made when I've just been trying to speak into this camera and talk to you in English. And I might forget, you know, how to say something in English. I might forget, uh, you know, what my, my flow of thought or something like that. And I just freeze up talking to a camera. And if someone was to basically compile all of those mistakes, then they was, they could maybe make a case that Franklin doesn't know English. But if you, if you don't, know how to say a word or you forget how to say a word it does that mean that now everything that you knew before in the language is um, negated and and now you're reduced to knowing n nothing in the language I, I i don't believe that's the case I, and actually i just wanted to say the videos i will be putting on the youtube card or i just put on the youtube card are unlisted but they're public for anybody that has the link so you can share it if you would like and you can laugh at the videos. I think it'll be kind of fun to see mistakes, but but that's not a big deal um, when you have the right mentality. Okay, um, I think that it's important to have people to help you remember your progress and be excited for you. And I just want to end by saying this, um, that you might not know a lot in the language that you're learning. It might be true that you don't know the language that well, but don't let your mistakes in um, that language ne negate the progress that you've made on your language learning journey. Okay, that's the big point. And I think that's the mentality to, to have when people say, oh, you don't know anything. You have already made progress. Don't forget the progress that you've made. And I just want to end by uh, putting a video on the screen. It will be a video of some of the mistakes I made when I was trying to do my first cooking video in Spanish. And the big point I want you to get from that video is even though I made mistakes and even though it was, it was hard and all of this stuff, I didn't give up. Don't give up on your language learning journey. You can make it. My name is Franklin and this is FirstHousandHours.com.